Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. A bit ago I did a video on Assassin's Creed games. And because I've done that, now the gates are open for me to do other Assassin's Creed videos. I kind of legitimately just want to review every single Assassin's clothing in every single Assassin's Creed. Let's get started. Altair is up first. I actually do like the big brown belt on him. Brown is an underappreciated color because most people want a big, bright, colorful something. But I like the brown on him. It makes him look muted and mundane, and it actually really helps his aesthetic and design. I like his asymmetrical bracers, and I like his triangular piece that's holding his shirt on, I guess. And of course, the hood is always good, as are the coattails and the front of the coat. But besides that, Altair looks pretty basic. Altair uses the sword and the hidden blade, and I think also throwing knives. But besides that, he really doesn't have that much going on. I do think that he looks cool, but he's just kind of boring when side-by-sided with everyone else. Ezio, on the other hand, Ezio has a very, very good design. Having way more pizzazz, I guess that's the Venice coming out. Having way more red, having all of the armor on, the huge belt. All of it works very well. The cape, the cape that goes over just his shoulder, in fact. The extra detailing on the hood. It's beautiful. I really, really do like Ezio. Um, his use of weapons, specifically the fact that he now has the double hidden blades and will also occasionally use a sword. But really, the double hidden blades is the iconic one. I really like that. Though, I will say, his face looks almost a little sparse without the beard. He doesn't look different enough. I like the scar, but the beard really helps. Ezio in Brotherhood has even more of everything that I liked about Ezio last time around. So much so that I feel like I almost don't need to mention it. And he has the beard now. Assassin's Creed Revelations Ezio. Man. I didn't think I could like one better than Ezio. The weapons, the hook blade, the fur, and then the gray. It evokes the armor of Altair which I will not review because it's not required to get. Actually, you know what? I will review. Scratch that. But I really, really like this design for Ezio. The gray really, really helps make him stand out compared to his other selves. And what's more, also makes him look very, very striking next to Altair. It makes them look very, very different, which is helpful. And then changing the double hidden blade for the hook blade and making that his iconic weapon this time around. I, f I think that really works. I really do like that. Let's briefly talk about Ezio's alternate armors. The armor of Altair is primarily just a black version of his normal gear with some classical Venetian striping and piping on it. However, it looks really good. I love the layering on it. I love the different colors on, along the front where it goes black, white, red, black, white. And then it has secondary movement. This is an animation thing that I really love, but you'll notice it whenever a character has a cape or a little lantern on their belt or something long or a scabbard that isn't tied down. But when they move, it'll bounce along with them. It draws the eye and it helps you look at them. And it looks really nice. Um, so having that really, really does make Ezio look cooler. He's also got the armor of Brutus. Um... I don't like this one as much. I think it's kind of busy. Um, it looks huge, and he looks more like a Darksiders character. I, yeah, I really don't like that one as much. It's okay. Let's move on to Connor. Um, all right, this might be something controversial, but I think that Connor Kenway, or Radun Hagedun, has the best design of any Assassin's Creed protagonist. Altair has a lot of white in his design, and Ezio has a lot more red. Both of them heavily feature white, of course, and Connor does too because it's the whole assassin thing. But Connor very heavily features blue. I like this so much. It helps differentiate him from the red coats. He still has some red on him, which does help evoke a red, white, and blue, like, you know, the United States. And then, wow, just... The way that the hood looks, the detailing on the hood, the way that the coat looks. Colonial clothing, especially military clothing, does occasionally look pretty cool. I'll admit it. Um, and having that 
like it is, it all really comes together really well. It's very interesting because, like, looking at Assassin's Creed 1 and, like, oh, yes, this hood is a thing built to blend into scholars or monks. It's made to look like them. The hood is specific to this area and to these people. And then you take the hood out of that and put it in Venice, and it blends into those fancy Venetian clothes very well. And then you take it out of there and you move it to colonial United States, and it still blends in with their military uniforms as well. It looks so good. Like, ugh. Connor, naturally, birth name, Rodun Hagadun, is Native American. And so uses his weapons in a very specific way. He uses more weapons that are unique to him and his culture. Um, specifically, that's the bow. And using a bow in an era of guns, not fantastic guns, to be sure, but guns in general is cool. It gives you silence. It gives you a bit of flair. I really like it. And then the other thing is the tomahawk. Ezio's sword isn't as cool as Altair's. And let's be honest, Altair's sword isn't that cool. Everyone has a sword. There are so many swords in your modern day-to-day. -day. You're going to see a sword so many times if you're playing a video game. And so sometimes it's just hard to make a sword look cool. Like, it's just a bastard sword or it's just a katana. Like, all of the special little flares on it is not going to make it cooler than, for example, Rebellion or Yamato. Like... I think we've already hit peak sword, and so it's hard to do new things with a sword. And so giving Connor a tomahawk instead is really, really cool. It, you know, builds on his culture. It builds on him. And then you also have the thing of Connor isn't using his hidden blade as much. He's using his unique stuff more. And I really like that. Because Altair is synonymous with the hidden blade. And then Ezio is synonymous with the double hidden blade to give Connor something else that is melee focused, but is not a hidden blade, helps differentiate him. It helps specialize every protagonist out. And that really works for me. I like that a lot. Um, it's smart as well. And then the fact that it's the assassin logo, beautiful. And then side by side, this is a shot in the trailer. It's probably on screen right now. But side by side, the stealth and the silence and just the pleasantry of the hidden blade it's almost a casual weapon, you know, to the brutality and the emphasis and the force that you need to must put into using a tomahawk to kill somebody. There's so much more fury behind it. But Connor is not really that, like, crazy mad. Like, he's upset about things, but I don't think he's unreasonably so. And using such this brutal weapon in the same way that assassins use a hidden blade... And still doing the, you know, requiescat in pace with, like, an axe. Oh, it's really cool. There's a shot in the trailer where he beats a guy's head in with it. And it's a really, really messy noise. And doing that in Assassin's Creed is stylish. Next up is Aveline. Aveline is very atypical. She does not feature the hood very heavily. I think she can wear it in game, but people, you know, typically don't do that for her. Um, her normal outfit looks very piratey, which I actually like a lot. You know, she's got the tricorn hat. She has a lot of black, brown, and red, and I like that. Um, the sleeves are very, very cool, and she still has a lot of assassin elements in her design, just without the hood and without a lot of white. Um, and then the other things, being Aveline, she can change her clothes. You can code switch as a gameplay thing and be a fancy lady. I love this big, goofy hat. I actually really do like that hat. Um, and then the green and the yellow stitching on it, it looks really nice. It reminds me of Titania from Shin Megami Tensei. And then with her last outfit, still very casual. I actually like it. It's very, very subdued. It's mundane. And then you get a little bit of the same red, white, and blue elements that you would get from Connor because like, this is America, you know, a native American fighting for uh, a country that has promised him freedom and, and safety for his people and a slave you know but her colors are way more washed out and faded that's not the bright blue on the flag that's not the stark red on the flag and the white has you know been turned into a tan really really clean design all, all together it's kind of a shame that this game was trapped on the vita for so long because i think that it's better than some of the mainline games released for console 
So next up is Edward Kenway. Edward Kenway, I feel like his beard, his, you know, the chops, I feel like it does hurt him a little bit. That said, when he actually has, like, the hood down and you can see his hair, he's pretty hot. I'll be honest. Um, Again, a lot more brown in his design. It really, really looks like he's a man ready to go to war because he's just, he's got the normal assassin robes on and then he's just been putting a whole bunch of armor on it. And then he keeps dual wielding stuff. The double guns, the double swords, all the knives, just heavily armed. It's a really cool aesthetic, and it's a really cool look. I really, really like Edward's design. I don't think it's anywhere near as strong as any of the other designs. This is, in fact, the weakest design so far, but there are weaker ones, and we'll get to those, but... All right, next up is Aduale. Um, Again, pardon my pronunciation. I don't know if I pronounced it wrong the last time, but I think... It's right. Anyway, uh, he's got a very clean design. Though I will say, this is a very common thing. We've seen it twice now already, and both times were Ezio. But they're going to keep doing it. When they want to make an assassin look different and cooler, they just give them black armor. Like, instead of giving them white armor, they give them black armor. Um, And that's the case here. I love the huge sword. I love the the open chest again similar to connor you get this interesting like stitching combined with the assassin outfit and the fact that this is so open of an assassin outfit looks really really cool um and then just this huge blunderbuss and this is another thing maybe borrowed from Ezio, but just the final fantasy levels of straps and belts just covering the man um that said i do really like the design i think that the problem with this design is that it comes right after Edward. And so they need to do so many things in order to make it different to Edward. Like, well, Edward's outfit doesn't have, uh, uh, it doesn't have open sleeves. It has full sleeves. Well, what if we took away the sleeves for this outfit? It's got a whole bunch of shit on his chest. Well, what if we just opened this one's chest? It like doesn't have as, as strong of a presence of the front. Well, what if we just put a whole bunch of stuff on the front? Um, Minor detail, but I actually really like Adewale as a character, too. Like, fuck. That guy's cool. Um, Next up is Shay. Because Shay was released with the other guys in the Rogue Collection. Edward Adewale and Shay's games are all in the Rogue Collection. Um, And again, you know, hey, what if we made the white outfit black. They've done it for Ezio twice. They did it for Adewale. And this is a Templar, not an assassin. So maybe we can cut him some slack there. But again, you know, it's kind of funny that uh, Shay is seen most commonly with this huge fuck off rifle. Like, it's kind of funny that like, oh, what's the greatest weapon of the Templars? The gun. Um, His ponytail's all right. Uh, The hood is a little basic and... This this would be a black coat, just a boring black coat, but for all the red detailing on it and all the buckles and straps. And again, a whole bunch of stuff on the belt. I really like that. Um, and then the short sword, and I think he saw... Yeah, he has the hidden blade. Um, honestly, Shay's design is all right. The problem with Shay, I feel, like the biggest problem with Shay is just that he comes at a specific place where like there were just so many other competing assassins. Uh, and that's not helped with Arno. <laughs> Arno's up next. And like Arno at the very least, instead of just, oh, what if we took the white armor and then we made it black though? What if we made it blue? Um, there's this very good quote. I think it's from Jean-Luc Picard where he's talking about how the American flag is red, white, and blue because blood sacrifice and valor is more important. But the French flag is blue, white, red, because the bravery and, and loyalty is more important to them. And the fact that his whole outfit is blue and then it has a little bit of white, I think that's a cool and interesting inversion of Connor, who is another protagonist related to a very colonial heavy nation. Obviously, Connor himself is not British, but he deals with the British and directly fights the Redcoats. And then, you know, setting Arno next to that... Um, and then, again, the very good French designs on the front. I like the ropes and the belts. Again, you already get the huge secondary animation from the gigantic coat. 
but then you give the belt and the little strings on it, you get a little more out of it. Also, I do like, um, in the other outfits, I like where, like, it looks like he's just got buttons on buttons on buttons. I have no idea how this fucking code is really supposed to work, but I like it. It's, I like it, yes. It's got an ascot, it's got, like, collars like crazy. But, like, I'll be honest, this might be the weakest one. <laughs> Um, there's just not that much going on. So, Jacob Free is next. They spelled it funny. I think that his design is... You know what? Maybe his design is weaker than Arno's. It's just some, like, semi-rich, beat-up guy from, from Britain. The fact that the, the hood and the collar coexist, and he's, like, switching between the hood and the, the top hat, that is kind of funny. Um, but... Like, honestly, like, comparing to everyone else, it's just, there's not that much going on here. Like, there's not that much new. There's not that much that can be new. It's just more layers, more coat. I do like how he has a very interesting shirt underneath it, but, like, ah, I don't know. Evie being the first, like, prominent female assassin to be in a console game, because Aveline did not appear in a console game is cool and then like i like her design it's kind of steampunky the red cape that comes out from the black coat is cool and the the boots are kind of interesting i guess but like again meh i don't think it's the weakest design in here i think arno might still be the weakest design honestly i'm going back and forth on it but like after Ezio has so many cool designs and then connor has possibly the best design and then like they try to fix they try to ascend that with edward and they really can't so they just zig everywhere they zag with adewale and then um they just do everything but evil on shay like it's really hard to come after those and we can't really be having like just a basic guy again like altair because that would be really lame uh moving on to bayek Bayak looks so good. Again, like, zig everywhere we zag. The last couple of guys have had so many layers and shirts on shirts on shirts and, like, a shirt and then an overshirt and then a coat and then the assassin cloak and then the hood. And then they put a hat on that. Bayak doesn't even have a whole shirt. Honestly, word. I like it. The fact that, like, he doesn't have a full coat, he doesn't have a cape he doesn't have a cloak it's just a hood that goes on his head and shoulders and then a little bit of armor to keep stuff away from his heart and then some stuff on his shoulder so that he can protect himself there and then like most of Bayek's cool design I would say is in his weapons because that shield is really something that works for me really well um and then I also like him standing with his eagle like having the eagle is just cool uh, and then you put the, the stuff on the bottom of him. Like, all the skirts, essentially. It's really cool. There's this concept that they uh, that I really like from Star Wars, of all things. Where the clone troopers, uh, you know, from their native Mandalorian roots, have uh, this half skirt called a Kama. K-A-M-A, I believe. And it just, it looks pretty neat. Um, Aya's design is pretty similar it doesn't really have that much different it kind of it doesn't yeah like this one this one's okay it has all the the good of of by X, but it doesn't do that much new because like she shows up right next to by X, you know um alexios is almost kind of funny because it's very hard to like judge him because you know there's all the different outfits that you can put on um but, like, just to talk about the stuff that he's in on the box art. Ass Assassin's what now? <laughs> I, I talked about how it's kind of weird that, like, this game has so many things that are not Assassin's Creed, like multiple endings and dialogue choices. But, like, where where are we now? <laughs> like, this is so not Assassin related. The The default outfit is is just a Spartan guy. And granted, it's really cool. 
it's the coolest Spartan guy I've seen in a while, maybe ever. But it is just a Spartan guy, you know? I think he even does the, like, Sparta kick. Um, I do, this is a minor thing. I do like how they have, I think it's a Chris knife, the, the big, long, single-edged knife. That's pretty cool. Um, and I do like how, uh, uh, the spear is also a thing. And then talking about Cassandra, I like the, I like the asymmetrical cape. I like the big gauntlet. You know, again, this is, this is just Spartan guy and some gladiator woman. It's very difficult because like when we think of Greece, like Grecian warriors, we typically, I think of like a unit, you know, like I think of like a civ unit of like, oh yeah, it's a guy with like a bronze shield and a spear, you know, you think of something generic, but whereas like typically when you think of like a Viking warrior, you think of someone specific like Ragnar, or, you know, and so sometimes it's hard to specialize your characters when they are, you know, a Greek soldier or a hoplite or something, because like what what are they supposed to look like what are they supposed to to do you know <laughs> um and then last up is ivor uh again huge huge shoulders with a fur on it vaguely reminiscent of Ezio, but i think that this really works i love the the um i mean i wear makeup in videos relatively frequently uh but I love smearing, like, black paint around the eyes. You know, war paint, that's cool. I love that they're braiding their hair and beard. Like, goddamn, there's so much good here. And then again, like, it's hard to specialize with the the hidden blade. So, like, Connor has the, the tomahawk instead, and, and Ezio had the double. And, you know, then we kind of were like, well, then Edward is dual wielding and well, Adewale has the blunderbuss. That's cool. And then Shay has his, his gun. And and then, well, then the other guys. Yeah, the the guys. And, like, now we're getting back on track. Bayek has that cool bow. You know, Cassandra has that spear. Ivor has the axe. You know? It's kind of funny that Assassin's Creed transitioned into a Greek game and then went Norse right afterwards. And it's kind of reminiscent of how, like, we had God of War that was Greek, and then they just became Norse afterwards. But yeah, um, having the axe, ah, oh, it's a really cool axe. I love Viking aesthetic. I mean, gosh, you know, you know me. Um, and just it's a really cool design. The colors are a little muted, but at the same time, I do kind of appreciate when they still have muted colors in the past. I, I think that some people don't go far enough to have bright colors in the past. Like, you look at some mercenaries and they have, like, big square patches of yellow and, and red, like a harlequin on their outfit. And, like, mercenaries just dress like that sometimes, you know? But for this era, for this dark fantasy, for this grim stuff that they're doing, I actually do really dig just this big, brutal, black, brown, and red ivor. Anyway, that's every single review of every single assassin. Um, this is just their clothes and the general way that they present themselves. It has nothing to do with the gameplay of their actual video game that they star in. It's just my opinions on their outfits. I don't have anything about the protagonist of Assassin's Creed, the live service yet. Because it's not out and I don't think it's going to have very much of a main character anyway. Pardon my hoarse voice, I've been recording all day. But those are my opinions on Assassin's Creed. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Maybe next a video I make on Assassin's Creed will actually be a Let's Play of the games, considering that's my primary channel, but I digress. I've been Alfred. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.